Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have uh, three 2012 Red Bordeaux here, um, and um, I, now, they're, they're all from supermarkets. The first one isn't a supermarket label, but it's, uh, it says on the back it's available from booths. 2012, what was the vintage like? Um, it was, 2011 was a bit tricky. Uh, 2012 was probably a little bit better, but probably more erratic. Um, and uh, it was a year when I think there, there was rain towards the uh, middle of harvest. So if you got your Merlot in, the early grape, early, uh, you were okay. And if you got your Cabernet in late, then you had to sort through it and it was a bit... Uh, it was up and down, I think, is the uh, uh, probably a good description. Let's see whether these wines, which should all be based pretty much on Merlot, uh, are up and down. Um, and uh, and let's, let's see whether they're any good. First one is uh, Chateau de Rico, uh, Bordeaux Superior from Dort. Um, and um, have we got anything on the back about what it's made from? No, just dig in. It smells juicy and plummy, um, ripe but not overbaked. Uh, there's this little bit of uh, red berry rather than dark berry in there, and um, it smells like it's going to um, be a little bit refreshing. There's not too much of the leafy edge I, I, I get in there, uh, but it smells like it's going to be an honest glass of wine. And that's what it is. That's pretty much what you everything you have a right to expect from uh, uh, Bordeaux Superior. There's a juiciness there, but there's dry finish. Uh, there's lots and lots of fruit, but there's tannin as well. And um, uh, the finish you're left with has got that little bit of uh, dry chewiness that makes you think you certainly wouldn't want to sit down and drink it by itself, but um, uh, with steak, it would, or with lamb, it would go down uh, really rather nicely. Um, uh, what I also notice is they've um, they've done their extraction well. They've not gone over the top and, uh, and like pressed the life out of the grapes. Uh, they've got a good amount of juicy fruit there, uh, but um, not too much and not too much tannin with it. Uh, so yeah, decent, nice, uh, yeah, good midweek quaff. Mm, I like that. The next one, uh, Chateau Fonguillon. Uh, from Montan saint emilion so what they call one of the uh, saint emilion satellites, and this is a label from uh, uh, Yvonne Moe. I, I don't know whether it's an estate that they own or whether they just bottle it or um, blah, 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 bottled by Yvonne Moe, but uh, anyway. Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cab Franc, Chateau Fonguillon dates back to the 17th century, been in the same family all that time. Uh, let's just dig in and see where we get to. This probably has a little bit darker fruit. There's more on the blackberries, a little bit of black currant in there. Still the plumminess. Um, one of the problems I sometimes have with Yvonne Mo wines is that they over oak them, uh, but I don't get that problem here. It smells re it smells ripe, uh, but uh, not too ripe, and there's a little bit of uh, oak in there, but it's not swamped in the way that I think maybe you, this wine would have been about five years ago. Uh, so uh, yeah, it smells good. A little bit more extraction there, so uh, you get, um, uh, first of all, more tannin. Uh, you also get a little bit of, um, it feels like some of the fruit's gone really quite ripe, uh, not onto the jammy edge, but then it, they've extracted it and just got that little bit of desiccation in there. Um, and it, 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 it finishes with this tannic dryness, but also this what I call skinny dryness, where they've perhaps overpressed the skins a little bit too much and extracted some... Uh, Something that maybe wasn't quite as ripe as it should be. Um, I like it. Uh, I um, definitely need, so, again, some food. Uh, I just about prefer the previous one. But it's, it's okay. And whereas the first one, I think, is ready now, that one I wouldn't be surprised if... Um, give it a little bit, little bit of time to blossom uh, and it will come out of its shell and it may be that that dry edge that I notice now will fade into the background. So uh, I'll keep an eye on that and report back. Final one, uh, so uh, Chateau Le Vieux Pressoir, uh, Cuvée Saint-Jacques, Saint-Emilion Grand Cru, um, and I don't know if this is bottled specially for Marks and Spencers, it just says selected by Marks and Spencers, 80% uh, Merlot, 20% Cab Franc, uh, with no oak, to retain natural vibrancy. Let's see whether it lives up to that billing. Uh, I'm slightly concerned the cork broke when I was uh, pulling it out. Uh, I've got the other bit of it there, but uh, anyway, I'll dig in. 
and this smells like it's going to be the lightest um, uh, and most elegant of them. Uh, it's lovely, lovely perfume here. Maybe the first two was, were majoring on juiciness of fruit. Here, I get some of those, that, that little bit of perfume. I, I don't know whether it's the Cabernet Franc that's talking there. Unhampered by oak, so you're, you're getting that uh, yeah, a gush of friendly fruit. And it's on that black currant here, rather than the berries and plums that were on, on the, uh, the previous two. I think it's going to be the freshest. It's probably going to be the most gluggable, but uh, let's have a see. Fresh, juicy, a little bit of cedary, and it's got what I call benevolent greenness in there. This leafy edge. It's got the tannin, it's got a little bit of tar. Again, tar is something I associate with, uh, with Cabernet Franc. Um, and there's, there's a little bit of uh, plummy character there, but it's mainly the black currant and the black currant leaf that are, are driving it. Finish wise, um, it feels, yeah, it still feels like it's got a little bit of opening up to do. Um, and, um, but it, it, yeah, what, I, what I really like about it is it's that juicy, gushing freshness. Uh, my favourite of the three, uh, they were all pretty good, but that's, uh, that was my favourite, followed by the uh, Rico, the first one. And uh, the, Monge, M the Fongion in the middle was, were, were decent enough anyway. Um, and uh, for Supermarket Bordeaux, these three, I'm not sure, the first one says it's 10 quid, I don't know how much the, the, the other two are, but uh, I don't think they'll be stupidly expensive. These, uh, they do a pretty good job of doing an advert for Bordeaux. So uh, this isn't an advert for Bordeaux, uh, this is um, just me thinking, these are pretty nice wines. See you soon.